Adobe Lightroom has dominated the photography post-processing scene since its initial release way back in 2007. Its combination of database-driven asset management, non-destructive photo editing, and at that time, a one-off reasonable purchase price proved to be an attractive combination and it became an extremely popular app. But in October 2011, Adobe brought Lightroom into their subscription-based creative cloud bundle, triggering a sizable global backlash. That pushback against subscriptions didn't seem to make much difference to Adobe's profitability, however, and most Lightroom users eventually just sucked it up and moved to that specialized photography bundle or sold a kidney and subscribed to the full suite. As the use of raw processing exploded in popularity a decade ago, there was also a growing consensus among Lightroom users that the raw demosaicing engine developed by Adobe was subpar. There was a steady stream of users migrating to alternative post-processing applications, most notably Capture One. Personally speaking, I'm more than happy to stick with Lightroom. I think its demosaicing is now up there with the best of them, and features such as AI masking, AI denoise, profiles, and adaptive presets are significantly better than the competition. But I appreciate that for some of the reasons I've mentioned above, and for other reasons specific to each photographer's workflow, Lightroom might not be the best fit for everyone. And so if you've been trying to unsuccessfully break free from Lightroom for whatever reason, I have some suggestions for applications that might tempt you to cancel that Creative Cloud subscription for once and for all. While it's true that Adobe took a serious kicking when it moved over to a subscription software model, they definitely paved the way for a thousand other companies to follow suit. These days, everything from screenshot applications to web browsers have subscription models, and it's getting increasingly hard to find apps that developers are willing to sell at a one-off fixed price. One of the reasons that some photographers jumped ship from Adobe to Capture One a decade ago was because you could purchase Capture One outright. But Capture One was paying attention to Adobe's profit margins, and as far back as 2018, they launched their own subscription model, which damaged Capture One users' bragging rights somewhat. You could also buy the app outright, but last year, they changed the terms of their perpetual license, such that only point releases get updates, not major versions. There isn't even a price reduction if you're upgrading from a previous version. So it's tough to recommend Capture One if you're trying to escape subscriptions, but also don't want software that's frozen in time from whenever, usually about 12 months, your support window ends. Dick, so Photo Lab is an obvious choice, but only with a caveat. While this is sold with a lifetime license, granting you lifetime updates, like Capture One, that only applies to that major release. If you want to upgrade from Photolab 6 to 7, for instance, you'll have to pay an upgrade fee. But at least with DxO, there's a 50% discount. It's also worth remembering that DxO Photolab is already less than half the price of Capture One and, as far as I'm concerned, a far superior bit of software. 100 bucks every year or so seems like a pretty reasonable price to me, especially when you consider the quality of the app. But if you want to stay up to date, it's effectively another subscription. On One Photo Raw 2024 is another option, but like Capture One and Photolab, your $99 purchase price might be an outright purchase, but you only get free updates until Photo Raw 2025 is released. Also, it's not very good. Photo Mechanic, the digital asset manager that's so popular with professional photographers, is transitioning to a subscription model, and as much as I love Luminar Neo, it's not an acceptable alternative to Lightroom. ACDC Photo Studio Ultimate is probably the closest to Lightroom in terms of features and design, and it is reasonably priced at 149 bucks. However, the lifetime license doesn't guarantee perpetual updates either. For that, you have to pay 60 bucks a year for the Upgrade Assurance add-on. There are other good raw editors out there, such as Affinity Photo, but they have no 
asset management capabilities. I told you it was hard to escape subscriptions. The simple truth of the matter is if you want to escape subscriptions and upgrade fees completely, then you really only have one option, open source. Darktable is the asset manager and raw editor of choice within the open source community. It's an incredibly powerful application that can do everything Lightroom can and much more besides. Uh, if we don't include AI tools. It's also a fiercely complicated application with a utilitarian interface and some mind-bogglingly granular photo processing tools. For instance, in sharpening alone, there are thousands of options and configurations available. It's completely free though, and you might decide that the steep learning curve required to get the most out of Darktable is worth it to fully escape a subscription model. In terms of paid software, if you're prepared to eat the cost of paying for major upgrades, I'd go for DxO Photo Lab. With either of the Adobe subscriptions, an online portfolio is included in the bundle of extras you get with your software. If you set up the albums in Lightroom, it's ludicrously easy to create a slick, if relatively limited, site to showcase your photos. So what are your options if you want to ditch Adobe but still want to have an easily managed online presence? Ultimately, this depends on what you want your portfolio to do. Is it simply a place to showcase your photographs or do you want more functionality such as a shopping cart or client galleries? If all you want to do is showcase your photographs, then you have a couple of good options. Flickr's been serving the photography community faithfully for nearly two decades now and seems to have found a reliable benefactor since it was purchased by SmugMug a couple of years ago. Photography on Flickr has, by and large, dodged the fake, filter-heavy insanity of social media and still feels like a fairly pure photography community. All of which means it's a safe place to upload your portfolio and not do any damage to your credibility. At $6 per month on the two year plan, the pro package is good value if you need more space than the free plan offers. Back in the day, 500 Pix was a painfully edgy site and making it to their popular upcoming or fresh feeds was practically a career highlight. These days, it's just another portfolio site amongst many others, Chinese owned and run in partnership with Getty Images. At 10 US dollars a month for the pro version, it certainly ain't cheap either, and I find it hard to recommend it in any way. DeviantArt has a nice looking portfolio system, but it's not really used by professionals, and unless you're photographing furries conventions, probably not a good fit for most photographers. If you want to have some kind of e-commerce facility on your site, then you have two options. A hosted site builder service, such as Squarespace, who did not sponsor this video, Zenfolio, Pixper and Wix, who didn't either, or a roll your own solution using something like a WordPress site on a low end server bundle. The option you pick really depends upon how much control you want over everything. Choosing to host your site with someone like Squarespace means you're pretty much stuck with them because moving your data elsewhere is extremely difficult. But there's no getting away from the fact that it's very easy to build a slick looking portfolio on something like Squarespace and to then add e-commerce facilities to it. It's not cheap though, at about 35 bucks a month for a worthwhile package. Buying a bit of space on a co-hosted server platform and building your own WordPress site is really not that hard these days, thanks to one-click WordPress installers built into cPanel on pretty much all server packages and the block-based site construction tools in Gutenberg or a third-party page builder like Elementor. Having your own WordPress site gives you the ultimate level of control over every aspect of your site. I'm a big believer in steering clear of corporate subscriptions and will never willingly surrender control of my website to someone like Squarespace. The key to setting up a site in WordPress is to keep it nice and simple at the start and then just develop the site as you learn how it all works. You'll feel a sense of pride learn some useful IT skills, and have a site that is totally and completely under your control. Most of the high-end raw editors I've mentioned already have a digital asset management suite bolted onto them. None of them really compare with Lightroom's feature set though, and I don't think any of them can be extended with plugins the way Lightroom can. The app that gets closest to Lightroom's asset management is ACDC Photo Studio Ultimate, which I reviewed recently. 
It's an okay application and married with a better raw D mosaicing tool such as DxO Photo Raw could be a solid photo organizer. I think a better solution is to pair a great asset management application with a great raw editor. This gives you the flexibility if required to switch raw editors and maintain catalog integrity. In terms of asset management, if you're a Mac user, then I can highly recommend Peak2 by Syme, which the developers have branded as a universal cataloger. Peak2 enables you to combine multiple libraries across multiple applications in one single app. It currently integrates with catalogs built into On One Photo Raw, Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Cloud, Apple Photos, Luminar Neo, Capture One, Pixelmator Pro, DxO Photo Lab, DxO Pure Raw, Aperture, iView Media, and Instagram. You can also just add folders or drives of photographs and have the app index them. I have all of my photos indexed and managed in Lightroom, and I still use Peak2 every day because it has powerful search tools, including the best AI search I've seen in any app. It can also be purchased outright. But do note that it has no editing tools built in at the present time. It's simply an all-encompassing directory of your images. Mylio is another popular universal cataloger, and it's available on Windows, Mac, and mobile devices. Unlike Peak2, it doesn't work with existing catalogs. Rather, it simply indexes all your files, no matter where they're located. It can index files located on any device, including smartphones and tablets, and does have some basic editing tools built in. Bridge is one of the few Adobe apps that can be used completely free of charge. It also happens to be an excellent asset management tool, enabling you to index your photographs quickly and efficiently. It includes most of the functionality found in the Lightroom library module and more besides. Most recently, a brilliant workflow tool that makes batch processing a breeze. Lastly, for asset management, there's always Adobe Elements. This is an Adobe app that you can purchase outright. It's more geared towards the casual user rather than a photographer, but it's a good option for organizing your images in one single location. To summarize the situation for anyone that would like to ditch Adobe Lightroom, here's the TLDR. There really isn't an escape from subscription models these days for commercial photography software. Developers such as Capture One offer both subscription and perpetual licenses, but the cost of that perpetual license only covers your updates until the next point release. It is admittedly much better than a Creative Cloud subscription in that regard, because if you stop paying Adobe, the apps will simply cease to function. But in either case, the company has you on the hook by the balls if you want to keep your software up to date. If you want to go completely subscription free, and want a Lightroom-like application, then Darktable or perhaps Raw Therapy in the open source community are your only viable options. In terms of getting yourself some space online to showcase your portfolio, you have some pretty solid options. There's no easy way to transition from one portfolio to another, so my advice is pretty simple. Take back control. Buy yourself some online server space. You can get excellent deals these days that are cheaper than Squarespace. Build your own site using something like WordPress. It's mostly drag and drop. Stop buying into closed systems like Squarespace or Wix because the convenience they promise comes with some heavy compromises. Not the least of which is the cookie cutter designs and the limitations on what you can do with your site. In terms of asset management, you have some solid options here. And the dual app setup I propose makes a lot of sense to me. Find a DAM that works for you. Mylio, Peak2, Adobe Bridge. If you're on a Mac, Apple Photos is a capable asset manager. Team that app up with the raw editor that works best for you. Personally speaking, if I was opting out of a Lightroom subscription, I'd pair Peak2 or Adobe Bridge with DxO Photo Lab or Pure Raw. And that'll do us for this video, guys. Are you looking to escape that Adobe subscription model? Which applications have caught your eye? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you found this video to be useful, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more content like this from me in your YouTube feed. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.